Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, we have a cool bit of electronic wizardry from Track Electronics that we're gonna be putting into the D-Max. We're continuing the build. This is the AT2 Anytime Reverse Camera Input Module. And why that's cool is it gives you the option to turn on your reverse camera anytime you want. You don't have to be in reverse. But even cooler than that, it gives you the option to get an auxiliary camera happening. Now, in our instance, we're gonna be putting a front camera in the front of the D-Max, but there's lots of other applications. You might want to look at at the back of your tub to, to see what sort of gear you're carrying and make sure that's still okay while you're driving along. Maybe you wanna put it at the back of your caravan, maybe your tow ball, and it uses that existing big screen in the D-Max, so it pretty well gives you a tow mode that you see on the Rams and that kind of deal, so pretty awesome bit of kit. And what's also awesome is the Legends at Tracks Electronic have one of these exact units to give away to one of you guys. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see what you need to do to get yourself in the draw to win one of these. Now, as well as the Anytime module if you are using the extra camera and not just the reverse function you're gonna need a camera and I've just gone with one of these guys I'll make sure I link all of this in the description down below it's a standard standard sort of reverse camera 12 volt units but I wanted to get one that's a bit more waterproof a bit more sort of factory looking I guess and for me this is going to be sitting right in the front of the D-Max here. I'm gonna have a little panel just in here so I get that view down the front above the number plate there. So, and then you'll also need a decent set of trim removal tools, but enough jibber jabber, let's get cracking on working out how to install this lot into the D-Max. So here we are inside the D-Max and step number one is removing our screen. We need to get to the back of this. And with the D-Max, this front screen is, is exactly that. It's just the screen. The actual unit sits behind this. And so we need to lever this away. And using the right tool for the job is critical here. Make sure you get a good set of trim tools just like these. You wanna use your really wide one and then the sort of semi-wide one, I guess you call it. Don't use a little pick type style like that because you don't want to damage anything on your Duco. And then once you've got your tools at hand, we want to use them across the top section here and lever this top section from the split over here to the split over here and lever all of that away. We don't want to touch anything underneath here. There is some plastic welding going on here, so we definitely don't want to be yanking on any of that because you will damage it. There are a number of clips, the same sort of trim clips that you see everywhere else. There's three across the top, there's two down the bottom here, and then there's a couple in the corners. So what we're going to want to do is just pry this away and you'll see those start to pop out so that we have this whole, the whole front sort of fascia section here or sort of pried out at a bit of an angle. Now the unit is quite tight. Yours might be a little looser than mine, but mine was quite tight. Just got to be really aware of where those those clip positions are. And once you've got, especially this top corner came off easy for me, you should pry tool to get under there. And then you can easily sort of see down in there where those clip positions are. So you can kind of just work your way down one side. I've got this side out now. So now I just got to do the same down this side. And there we go, so we're out here. It is sort of pretty pretty hairy, but like I said, best tip is they're, they're each, they're little white clips, you can see them when you peer down here. So I'll show you that in a sec. It's just a matter of really taking your time and doing one by one and working your way along while sort of keeping some, keeping some pressure at the same time as you pry the next unit off as you go around. And once you are at this point, you'll see that there's these couple of clips that live in the bottom here. It's just a push and a lift out on each of those. So on to the next step, once you've successfully extracted the screen component, you wanna put that down face up. Don't put it face down, you don't wanna scratch the heck out of your screen. So put that in a safe spot. From here, there's a number of Phillips heads, one, two, three, four. We need to remove those so we can access the main unit. Now, top tip here, make sure you use your other hand so you capture the screw. You don't want it falling down the abyss like my clip here, because you're never gonna find it again. Now, once we've got each of those removed, our next step is to get this guy out of there. So just gently pry it out. Just be careful of the edges. They are generally super, super sharp. Can always put a bit of a cloth down here if, if you need to. Now our next step here is getting into the back of the unit so we can start running our patch cable. And to do that, we wanna remove this guy right here. This is our eight pin white connector. And then this guy here, the green one. So the white in the middle, the eight pin, and then our green one. Standard sort of push and pull scenario. And then the green one. And once they're out, we wanna grab our wiring loom, not the one with the little black box and the RCA connectors, the other one. You then wanna find the eight pin connector, which is this one here. There's only one. And then no surprises to where that connects to. That connects straight back in to where the factory position goes. And then click that home. Once that guy's in, we wanna get our patch cable for this side. So we wanna go to the other one. Surprise, surprise, here it is. 
This one looks identical to the factory one. That's the guy then we want to come down here and we want to plug into where that patch goes, click it into position. And there we go, we've got both ready to go. The next step is to grab our little black box. We want to then grab the red and the black cable. That then needs to get connected to the other red and black cable over to the other harness. You'll see there's only one once again, and then you just want to click that one into place. So going well here, we're running out of things to plug in, which is always a good sign. Next step is we want to earth out our main brains of the operation. So we want to get our earth strap. There's only one. That's the little black terminal here. On the sides of the unit down here, you'll see a couple of Phillips heads. Undo the side and tighten that into place. Then before we move on to connecting up our camera side of things, we just need to complete the patch side of things. So green to green, and then our leftover male and female of the white plugs to clip into place as well. So onto our next step, and that is starting to wire in the actual camera feeds themselves. This is our little black box of trickery that makes the magic happen. We have a camera input one on the left, we have camera two on the right, and then we have our camera output there on the bottom right hand side. It's really important, camera one is your input for your auxiliary camera, not the factory one. The factory one must be plugged into camera two input, and then the output plugs in on the side here. For the moment, let's plug up our existing system. So we can just plug those in RCAs to RCAs, nice and easy. I'd recommend just wrapping a bit of electrical tape through these as well, just to make sure they stay connected and they don't sort of rattle loose or anything underneath the dash. So we're running out of things to plug in. Once they're done, we've really only got a couple of things left. The, you should only have these two left, the two yellow ones. We have a yellow RCA, which is the input like we just talked about for our second camera. And then this is a power wire for said second camera as well. You have to use this for the system to work correctly. So make sure you use this to power up the camera. And then it's also recommended to earth said camera is we use the same earth that we're earthing the whole system out, this bolt on the side. Just run some twin core out to where you're gonna have your camera, whether that's out the back looking at the bed or your, even your camper trailer, for example, at the back of your caravan maybe. For us, we're gonna be out the front of the D-Max. We'll just run some twin core all the way through, same as what we've done in other installs through our grommet on the side. We'll run that through so that we can wire it in to our connectors here. Now here's a quick overview of the actual camera itself. They're all pretty much the same. And for our purposes here, we need to make sure we have a camera that's NTSC compatible. They have a connecting piece, then they connect into here which the power lead, this is what we need to route through to our head unit. So we're gonna to have to extend this because it's only about a meter, we'd need about two and a half. So we just need to extend that with some connectors. And then that runs with about 20 zillion meters worth of RCA cable through to our input. And so that's the next step. We wanna final mount our camera. We wanna extend the power cable, the positive and the negative for our camera loom. And then we wanna route all of this together, including the RCA through the engine bay if we if you're mounting at the front or through the back if you're going from the back but ultimately we want to land right in the center of the cabin where our head unit is and the next step is to start finalizing everything here we should have our rca lead pulled in from the front camera that's routed all the way around and then similarly for our positive and negative feeds from the camera itself at the front there basically they're exactly the same route that we used for the supernova spotlight so check out that video if you haven't already and then from here it's it's home stretch time we've got our auxiliary camera input it should be the only other RCA available we want to then just connect those guys together and then finally it's our power our positive feed needs to connect to the track electronic yellow wire and then our negative once again we just need to put a ring terminal on that that will go down the side here with our other earth from here you want to just grab some electrical tape and tape up some of these connections so each of the rcas you just want to put a ring of tape from one side to the other just to give it a little bit of extra security just secure everything else together with some zip ties so that it's all nice and neat and then we want to slot uh, this guy back into position just make sure the leftover bit of loom here this is your switch loom you want to route that so route it down underneath the driver's wheel and then back up above the little coin cabinet where that switch bank is that's where we'll put the switch and then put this guy back into place and once this is back in position grab your four screws and you can screw this back into place grab your screen connect up the two connectors they can only go in one way so just be careful with that just make sure that your white clips are all located and then you can gently press that back into position now final step is to install Install our switch before we can give this a test. Now this lives up in the switch panel just here, same position as we put our supernova lights. So we just need to pop that off, which is just a matter of lifting up 
and lifting these out. We can then give that a firm pull forward, clip these little clips out to get our spare out of there. And then this one just clips into its position. Once you've got that ready to go, just route your loom up underneath the steering column, make sure it's all zip tied and secured and plug in to the switch. So there we are, we're all in, we're all put back together again. There is only one thing left to do and that is to give this guy a test. So here we are, we're in the D-Max, we're ready to go. Let's fire the truck up. Start it up like normal. Loading screen, that's good. A screen, screen's working, that's a, that's a plus. Isuzu Lego, Isuzu Galaxy. Press this dang button every single time. Okay, we're working. Now, let's check the original functionality. We'll chuck it in reverse. Boom, normal, normal. That's, that's what we would expect, right? That's what we'd expect. Now, let's test out the module. So if we flick over to here, and here's our camera buttons. First off, we'll click our top button here. What we should see is our reverse go on. There we go, awesome. So we can flick that on and off. Anytime we want, fantastic. And we're definitely in, we're definitely in park. You can see it in there. I'm sure it says it on the dash there somewhere. Yep, on the left. So camera on anytime, that's awesome. And you can see in there as well, a little blue, little blue light lights up just like our others, just like our spotlights as well, actually. So that's awesome. Now, this is the awesome part. If we click change camera, we've got a front camera. Check that out, how awesome. So come back over here. I'll flick it so you can see. Boom, front camera time. That is awesome. And of course, if you don't have it on the front, maybe you've got it in the tub, you know, maybe you got it at the back of the caravan, that kind of deal, you're gonna have exactly that same functionality. That is absolutely awesome. So there we go, guys. That is the Track Electronics AT2. The video show me how D-Max has a front camera. I reckon that is absolutely awesome. It's the Anytime Reverse Additional Camera Module. Now, like we said at the start of the video, if you're keen to win one of those modules for your very own, the legends at Track Electronics have one of those to give away. To go to the draw, it's dead easy. You gotta do two things. One, of course, make sure you subscribe to the Video Show Me How YouTube channel. And two, let me know down in the comments down below. Have you got your D-Max? Are you looking at getting a D-Max? And what is the first mod? What's the first mod you're keen to do to your truck? That's all you gotta do, it's pretty straightforward. One, subscribe. Two, leave a comment down below and you are in the draw. We'll do a live draw at the end of the week and see who is the lucky winner. And that's all for this video. Once again, a big thanks to Track Electronic for supporting supporting this video and putting up the prize. Of course, massive thanks to the Video Show Me How patrons via Patreon. You guys are absolute legends as always. Thank you very much for your support. Check out the DMAX playlist if you haven't already. We're, we're well on our way into the 30s of different videos, so maybe there's something there that might help you out with your build. But other than that, guys, as always, I hope that you have an amazing day, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.